Mm, it's all good. Holy sh. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to Primo Cooks. Today we are going to make a very special hot and cheesy corn dip. For all of you corn lovers, you're gonna love this dish. It is a crowd pleaser all around. So we're gonna get started by first sauteing up a couple of ingredients. We have some red onions here. We have a half of a cup, finely diced, very small. And then we also have one whole poblano pepper cut up, diced very small. And what you want is to get your poblano and your red onion to be the size of a piece of corn or smaller because the corn is the star of the show. So you don't want them to be bigger than that, okay? And so what we're gonna do is a quick saute just to soften them up a little bit. This dish is eventually gonna go into the oven, but we wanna par cook the peppers and the onions. Par cook means to not cook all the way, but start the cooking process. I'm gonna put my heat up to about medium high heat. I've already warmed this pan a little bit ahead of time for filming purposes. We're gonna add about one tablespoon of avocado oil or any other high heat oil, like grapeseed oil is another great option. So we just want this oil to get a little hot and then we will add our red onions, sizzling, which is a good sign. So we're gonna commit, add this whole thing Add our poblanos, give them a stir with the oil. And if they're sizzling pretty hard, we're gonna turn it down to medium heat. And this process is gonna go very quickly. We're gonna let them sit here for about two or three minutes. And what I wanna do now is add in two teaspoons of chili powder, which seems like a lot, but this is gonna get mixed into the dip. It's gonna impart a lot of flavor and add some color. So one, two. And one other additional ingredient I'm gonna add into here once the chili powder is evenly mixed in. We're just gonna do one teaspoon of tamari. I'm gonna eyeball, Meh, one teaspoon. If you are soy free, just skip this. It's not gonna make a huge difference. I just like to impart a little saltiness into the veggies as we're cooking them because we're not actually going to use any salt in this recipe because we will be adding in a variety of cheeses as we get going that have enough salty flavor to carry this whole dish through. So after a minute or two, pick up a piece of pepper and see its status. Mm, really good. What you're looking for is you want it to still be crunchy, but you want it to be softer than how it started because we're gonna end up mixing this in with some things that go into the oven. It will continue cooking, so you don't want it to get totally mushy. So at this point, it's been about two minutes, I'm gonna give it another good stir. I'm gonna turn the heat off and leave it sitting here for just a moment. And while this sits, we're gonna move over to the cutting board. I have a glass dish here ready to go. I have three ears of corn, sweet corn, and this I took off the cob already. You'll see a visual aid. And after you take it off the cob, you'll often notice you'll have chunks of corn that are stuck together still. So as you put it into your mixing bowl, what you wanna do is just use your hand and give it a squeeze. Let those corn kernels part ways from one another. Once you have all of your beautiful fresh corn in there, what you're gonna do is add in those peppers and those onions that we sauteed with the avocado oil and the chili powder. Before you even get started, I've already done this, but you wanna grease an eight by eight or nine by nine baking dish and Preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Okay, so stirring in this mixture with the corn, turning the corn a beautiful orange color from the chili powder. Next move, once you have that mixed in, key ingredient here, we have some mayonnaise. Two thirds cup of mayo. This is gonna go in and add this nice creamy element to the dip once it's done cooking. I want it all, give it to me. And now for the cheese. So for the cheeses, we have one and a half cups of mozzarella shredded cheese. Preferably shred it yourself, but if you have pre-shredded, totally fine. We have one cup of extra sharp white cheddar. Cheese. And then half a cup of crumbled feta. So all these things are now going to go into this bowl and we will stir it. Stir it really good. You're gonna stir it for a while. The cheese is gonna get a tiny bit melty from those hot peppers and onions. And then we want to give it evenly combined with that mayonnaise, get the mayonnaise spread out so that it becomes creamy. 
Lastly, before we pop this into the baking dish, we're gonna add two teaspoons of white vinegar, and I'm just gonna eyeball this. One, two. So now we'll give it another really good stir with the vinegar. And the vinegar serves an important role because we have salty things in here. We have the cheeses, which feta is very salty. Sharp cheddar is very salty. And then mayonnaise is generally also quite salty, so this acid is gonna balance that out and give it a bright note. And once you have it nice and evenly mixed, I always like to give it a taste just to make sure, even though it's not quite what it's going to be when it comes out of the oven and everything's all melted together, you can get a pretty good general sense of what the flavor combinations are gonna act like in your mouth. So good. I think we're happy how that is. What you could do is if it's too salty to you from all the cheeses, add more white vinegar, okay? This is perfectly balanced in my opinion. I'm gonna leave it how it is. I'm gonna take my baking dish. I'm gonna flap all my corn stuffing in here. Look how gorgeous this is. It's not even cooked yet. So now this beautiful baby is gonna go into the oven for 15 minutes at 400 degrees. Okay, 15 minutes has gone by. Let's pull this baby out. Hot and cheesy corn dip coming your way. So it's all bubbly here on the outside, as you can see. It's gonna be delicious. We wanna let it sit for 15 minutes and cool down a bit. If you eat it right now, it'll be delicious. It'll burn your mouth a tiny bit, but it's also a little more soupy. Once it sits and congeals and becomes more of a cheesy, melty dip that you can put on a chip roll easily, that's what we're going for. So be mellow. Let it sit, 15 minutes. All right, we've let our corn dip cool for 15 minutes. And now the only thing that you need to do really is actually nothing. You could just eat it. Or if you wanna eat a little fancy, if you have some parsley on hand or some green onions, maybe some cilantro, finely minced, just do a tiny sprinkle as a garnish. And this is purely for looks. It's not really gonna change the flavor too much, but the green will make everything pop. Perfect. You can serve this with chips, pita bread, or carrots, some kind of cut up veggie, or you can just eat it with a spoon. It's freaking delicious. It's sort of like a cheesy corn casserole. So let me just show you how it goes. Uh-oh, it broke. Mmm. It's gonna sound crunchy. <laughs> It's so good. Holy shit. So good. <laughs> Cheesy freaking goodness. Oh my God. All right. I want to plow this into my face as fast as possible. So I'm going to stop myself. Stick around for a moment. I'm going to talk to you about ways to use this, ways to substitute for dietary restrictions, talk a little bit about corn. So hang on. Stick around. Afterthoughts coming up. Yay. Hot and cheesy corn dip. This is my new favorite recipe. I wrote it very recently. Ironically, I served it to some friends who are all from Iowa. Hi Liz, hi Nico, at their barbecue. And it was a major hit. And so I refined it a little bit and now it is a very addictive part of my repertoire for going to parties, potlucks, barbecues. It is a crowd pleaser, everyone loves it. So currently corn is in season here while we're filming, but in general in the United States, it is the months of May through September that corn is in season when you can find fresh corn on the cob. So if you want to make this recipe when corn is not in season, you can do frozen corn or canned corn. My preference though is if you're going to substitute for fresh corn, go with frozen because frozen corn, they harvest it when it's fresh and then they freeze it. Canned corn, a little bit different, plus it has all of this liquid and preservatives in it. So it really doesn't taste as true to the flavor of fresh corn. So if you want to use frozen corn, the only difference that you're going to do in this recipe is you're gonna take about three cups of frozen corn in place of three ears of corn, cobs of corn. I don't really know. Um, <laughs> but you're gonna take uh, three cups of frozen corn and when you're sauteing your onions and your peppers, you're just gonna add the frozen corn right in there. because you don't really need to do anything but defrost it in that mixture. And it will still taste amazing and great. So you can really make this recipe all year round. Uh, if you wanna substitute cheeses, you totally can. So in this recipe, we had mozzarella, sharp cheddar, and feta. <clears throat> mozzarella, you wanna keep the same because 
It is stringy, it's super cheesy, it adds to the texture, and it's not that salty. So it's a really important part of the cheesiness. But the sharp cheddar and the feta, you could totally substitute for something else. You could do gouda or manchego. You could try parmesan even. You could try a combination of different cheeses and I think it will always be great in just a slightly different flavor profile, but you're still gonna love it. So use what you have on hand, just make sure you stick with the mozzarella. And if you're vegan, I haven't tried this, but I'm confident that you could substitute veganaise or some sort of vegan mayo for the mayonnaise and vegan cheese in place of all of the cheeses. And I'm pretty sure it would still be delicious. I would just recommend add a tiny bit of salt, probably half a teaspoon. We used no salt in this recipe because the cheeses are salty and mayonnaise is salty. Um, and vegan mayo and vegan cheeses are generally a lot less salty. So you're probably gonna wanna add a little salt in there, but I think it would be great made vegan as well. So let us know in the comments below if you have any other suggestions, ideas, questions about this recipe. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. We appreciate it. And check out our website at primocooks.com for upcoming virtual cooking classes. We would love to see you until next time. All right, wait, wait, All, what did I say? All right, what? All right. Good job, babe. <laughs> Thanks.